it's this. I, I, maybe just because I grew up in a different time, but though I often disagree with Republicans, I actually never learned to hate them the way the far right that now controls their party seems to hate our president and a lot of other Democrats. He talked a lot about uh, the idea of Democrats as the, the party of compromise. Um, he talked about how I never learned to hate Republicans, and he, he said uh, you know, his applause line was, one of the reasons to send Barack Obama uh, back for a second term is that he's still committed to compromise. Unfortunately, the faction that now dominates the Republican Party doesn't see it that way. They think government is always the enemy, they're always right, and compromise is weakness. There have been numerous instances where people on both sides of the aisle have, have tried to compromise, and it hasn't worked out. One of the, one of the obvious uh, examples is um, uh, the grand bargain that the president cut with uh, Speaker of the House John Boehner. Um, you know, this is a budget deal, making a lot of tough choices, a lot of compromises, and the president found himself under siege by members of his own party, and, uh, and Republicans, uh, you know, were, were criticized by the far right of their party. If you look at the numbers, you know employment is growing, banks are beginning to lend again, in a lot of places, housing prices are even beginning to pick up. But too many people do not feel it yet. I had the same thing happen in 1994 and early 95. President Clinton talked about how uh, he sympathizes with President Obama. He knows what it's like to be at the end of your first term, and you've got all these good things working, but the American people just don't feel it yet. They just haven't felt the recovery the way they should yet. We could see that the policies were working, that the economy was growing, but most people didn't feel it yet. Thankfully, by 1996, the economy was roaring, everybody felt it, and we were halfway through the longest peacetime expansion in the history of the United States. But and what President Obama and certainly President Clinton are banking on here is that everybody's going to have kind of a wistful recollection of the 90s as this, uh, this great economic boom. And there certainly was great economic activity in the 1990s. Um, what Clinton didn't say was that in his second term, uh, you know, things got better. And then at the end of his second term, things were not good. Um, there were many bad signs at the end of 2000, or at the beginning of 2000, of, uh, of financial problems. And uh, some of the policies uh, that were put in place, uh, many historians have credited, with actually helping lay the groundwork for the financial meltdown of 2008. So, um, you know, kind of leaving that part out. The Recovery Act saved or created millions of jobs and cut taxes, let me say this again, cut taxes for 95% of the American people. President Bush, when he would give you a uh, tax rebate, he'd send you a check in the mail, right? So you got a check in the mail. Um, what happened in the Recovery Act is most Americans ended up with a little bit more in their paycheck every, uh, every week. Um, but, you know, surveys have shown that most Americans had no idea that they got a little extra money. <laughs>